Games are designed to fuel addiction, and designers use psychological tactics and gaming mechanisms to trick us into spending a lot of cash. We'll show you what to look out for. Also on the show, if you're constantly posting about your kids online, you're putting their data and privacy at risk. It's as simple as that. Oversharing can make children vulnerable to harassment and predators. And Tesla has finally revealed its robo-taxi, but competitors have already hit the streets. There's no doubt that robo-taxis are far from going mainstream, but why is that? These topics are moving the tech world. Ever found yourself saying just one more round while gaming or felt excited to open that next loot box? That's all by design. Worldwide, more than 80% of internet users play video games. In a systematic review of recent studies, 5% of participating gamers were found to have a gaming addiction. Games like Roblox or Fortnite are designed to keep us hooked and spending. So here's what to look out for. Rewards and streaks. In-game rewards like badges or points trigger dopamine, your brain's feel-good hormone, which makes us want more. Games reward progress and repetitive actions like logging in daily. It's called building a streak. You'll want to keep hold of it, so you keep coming back. And that's where games can cash in, by letting you pay to restore a lost streak or progress faster. But there's something else that makes gaming companies even more cash than streaks. Loot boxes. Here's the deal, you spend real money to get random in-game rewards. It could be a rare skin or a powerful item, but the odds? Not great. It's called variable reward, and it's extremely effective. You never know when you'll hit the jackpot, so you just keep going. Researchers say they can be dangerous, especially for kids who struggle to recognize and resist this mechanism. Loot boxes are a big part of what's called microtransactions. You pay a small amount, say just one euro, for each loot box. It doesn't seem like much, but it adds up pretty quick when you're chasing that rare item. A study by researchers at Central Queensland University in Australia found that participants spend between 31 and 45 euros on in-game content per month, while multiple studies suggest there's a strong link between using loot boxes and developing a gambling addiction. Another trick? Games often use fake in-game currency instead of real cash. That makes it harder to track your actual spending, and it gets worse when games are specifically designed to target kids. Some games are specifically built to attract the attention of kids. Roblox or Fortnite are great examples. Bright colors, fun characters, and references to memes and trends. But Roblox takes all of this to the next level by making gamers cash in on other gamers. By 2022, Roblox had over 61 million daily users and more than half of them were under the age of 13. In Roblox, users can design their own worlds. The developers incentivize and manipulate kids to apply the gaming tactics we spoke about earlier to keep other players hooked. And the kids who design these worlds in Roblox can even make real money from them. Creators earn a share of the revenue when people spend money in their worlds. By exploiting microtransactions like loot boxes, these creators cash in. Researchers are trying to understand why too much gaming can become addictive and harmful. It's hard to tell the difference between having a regular gaming problem or a full-blown addiction. So how can you protect yourself and your kids? Here are a few quick tips. First, monitor screen time and set limits. Apps like Screen Time for iPhones or Digital Wellbeing for Android can help you track playtime. Second, create kids' accounts. Wherever possible, create a kids' account for your child. They often block persuasive features in games. And thirdly, set a spending limit. Set a spending cap on your credit card or bank account to prevent overspending. To be honest, I don't think it should be up to us to be aware of these tricks. In Australia, for example, regulators have started placing age restrictions on games with loot boxes. It's not perfect, but it is a start. And of course, games are designed to be engaging. That's why we play them. We want something that keeps us hooked. But if they exploit that and make us pay to keep playing, or if they abuse gambling mechanisms, that's a line that needs to be drawn, especially when games cater directly to children. Do you have any idea who's using your kids' photos? It could be predators or even big tech. Let's break down the dangers of posting your children's pictures online and why protecting their digital privacy is more critical than ever before.
AI training on pictures of children. Tech companies aren't exactly upfront about how they use our data. They're hungry for material to train their AIs, so they scrape the internet. Companies like Meta and X may be using your photos to train their models. You can opt out of this in the privacy settings, and luckily most companies haven't been training their AI with private accounts, at least for now. But even if you opt out, third parties can still grab your posts. Earlier this year, Human Rights Watch reported that the data set Lion 5B may contain thousands of images of children. Some of these are easily traced back to real people. This particular data set has been used to train big AI image generators like Stable Diffusion and Midjourney. And there's a far more disturbing risk. Predators using your kids' photos as child abuse material. Many images shared in pedophile forums come from social media. Up to 50% of the images on those sites are grabbed from public posts. And AI is making it worse. In just a few clicks, someone can create a nude image of somebody else using a fully clothed photo of them. In one case, Spanish teenagers use an app to undress social media photos of their classmates. And there are plenty of other apps that can also be used to edit images of your kids. The easiest way to protect photos of your kids? Set your and their accounts to private. That way only people you trust can see your posts. You could also consider creating a closed Facebook group with family and friends or use a group chat, but make sure it's an encrypted messenger like Signal or WhatsApp. What to do if your child's images are misused. If you do find your child's image online and want it removed, you can request to have it taken down. But finding the picture in the first place can be hard and removing the picture, sometimes even harder. The tool Take It Down can help you with that. It creates a digital fingerprint or hash of the image being misused as child sexual abuse material and helps platforms identify and remove it. Several social media platforms are already using this tool. But most of the abuse doesn't happen on social media. It's actually hidden in dark web forums where predators share their collections, often pictures grabbed from public posts. Remember, once a photo is online, it will most likely stay there forever. So it's better to be safe than sorry. The safest option is not to post pictures of your kids online at all. But if you do, consider the risks and tips we've mentioned. Think about blurring their face or covering it with an emoji. If you want to edit a photo this way, experts suggest doing so directly on your device instead of using the photo editors on social media platforms. Why? When you edit a photo directly in an app, the original is uploaded to a server somewhere. From there, it could potentially be grabbed for AI training or even be exposed in a leak. In general, when it comes to sharing photos of your kids online, avoid sharing private moments like bath time or any other time when they're not fully clothed. And most importantly, talk to your kids and get their consent before posting photos of them online. The same goes for your cousin's son or your neighbor's daughter. Always speak to them and their parents first. In some countries like Germany, that's actually the law. Children aged 7 to 18 have the right to control their own image image online. Would you take a ride in Tesla's new robo taxi? So I hope this goes well. Elon Musk has been teasing Tesla's fully autonomous robo taxis for years, but there's still no concrete launch date in sight. Musk says production will probably start sometime before 2027. Until then, the car manufacturer needs to improve its existing technology. Tesla continues to face criticism for their self-driving software, which isn't actually fully self-driving and tends to fail. So let's see if Musk misses yet another deadline. Meanwhile, other companies already have robo taxis on the road. In the US, US, Waymo is leading the charge with over 100,000 paid rides every week. Amazon is also gearing up to launch its own fleet soon. And in China, Beidou has rolled out its commercial robo-taxis. But outside the US and China, robo-taxis are still rare. Take India, for example. It's a global tech hub and one of the world's largest car markets. But there are big challenges when it comes to self-driving cars. That's because roads are chaotic with few signs or traffic lights. Basically, no standardized infrastructure. For an AI, that's simply a nightmare. Plus, there's a ton of vehicles and pedestrians that could overwhelm the system. And this isn't just an issue in India. Many other regions like Latin America face similar problems. And in Europe, strict regulations often keep robo-taxis off the roads altogether. Even in the US, where robo-taxis are gaining traction, many people are wary. Two thirds of the population say they wouldn't ride in one if they could. People really aren't on board yet. So much so that robo-taxis have even been set on fire. So why the resistance? 
For one, people are worried about safety. We all remember those headlines about robo-taxi accidents. To ease concerns, Waymo launched a safety hub and shared data showing their cars are supposedly safer than human-driven vehicles. But there are still risks. One recent incident went viral. Two men jumped in front of a Waymo taxi, harassing the passenger and blocking the car's path. Get out of the way! Move! They eventually gave up, but the incident highlights concerns. And it's not just about safety. Human taxi drivers are worried too. They see robo-taxis as a threat to their jobs. On the other hand, robo-taxis could be cheaper for riders, making them a serious competitor. So what needs to happen before robo-taxis can go mainstream? Firstly, better infrastructure. Cities need to invest in tech-friendly infrastructure like smart signals, dedicated lanes, and clear road markings for robo-taxis to navigate. Then there's public trust. People also need to trust these cars. Transparent communication, safety demonstrations, and successful pilot programs may help. And lastly, addressing legal and ethical issues. Clear guidelines are needed for companies operating robo-taxis. This includes liability, data privacy, and ethical concerns like job loss for human drivers. In theory, robo-taxis could make roads safer by reducing human error. They could also ease traffic through smarter route planning. But after seeing this video of Way Waymo taxis honking at each other, I'm not convinced yet. There are also major privacy concerns when it comes to self-driving cars and other smart devices. Let's take a closer look at that. It's true that smart cars can gather lots of sensitive data and cause harm. These are the three main risks. Gathering user data. If a car system has a voice assistant, hackers or those controlling the software could eavesdrop on conversations. They could also access onboard cameras. Beyond that, tracking the car's routes and stops via GPS would create a detailed picture of the driver's daily life. Together, this data could reveal intimate details about the person behind the wheel, putting their safety at risk. Gathering information on locations and infrastructure. Using the car's external cameras and sensors, someone with remote control could gather detailed data about the surrounding areas that the car travels through. This could give them valuable insights into critical infrastructure, such as power plants or even military bases. Manipulation of navigation systems. Many of the latest smart cars can be controlled remotely, which means they could potentially be steered against the driver's will. Theoretically, that means that smart cars could intentionally be used to harm people inside or around them by causing an accident. To sum it up, smart cars have a lot of potential for misuse. Well, that's it from us. Keep your eyes out and see you next time.